Hi. Please, if you're getting married <laughs> and you're old, invite me to as many of your festivities as you can. Your Jack and Jills? Oh. I can, ro I can flick a toonie better than anyone in the world. Uh, yeah, no, my name is Drew Fairservice. I, uh, I work at The Score. I, talk, I write about baseball uh, almost all the time uh, because I really like baseball. I'm going to talk about uh, how not to be a baseball jerk or, seeing that we're uh, all adults here, how not to be an asshole, essentially, which is uh, probably a little bit rich coming from me, if you're familiar with my persona at all, or the things that I've written and said uh, for the past, I'd say, five or six years on, uh, for my job. But I'm going to start by telling a story of uh, something that happened, I'd say, maybe two or three weeks ago. I, uh, I have two young children. One of them is old enough now that she plays t-ball. And I was at uh, my daughter's t-ball game. And it was after the game, and the kids are all eating you know, the increasingly elaborate snacks uh, that are like a no sugar contest so you can come up with the coolest snack without putting anything that would poison them into it. And uh, we're just t sitting around shooting the shit and the Blue Jays came up. Again, this is three weeks ago. So the Blue Jays were, by, in no uncertain terms, in first place. And the other parents start to talk about their extreme disappointment with the Blue Jays. Uh, just kind of normal talk, normal conversation, people saying, oh, I don't like this. There's the one uh, man who is the coach of the team. He is in charge with coaching them, quite literally. And he's, I should have known better than to expect anything from a man who uses the word back catcher constantly. <laughs> but here we are. He said something that I could not believe I heard. He said, you know the one I really don't like? Is that Mark Burley? And I, I kind of scratched my head and I said, Burley? What is it that you don't, don't like about him? I mean, he's an all-star. He's, you know, he's, he's having the best, almost the best year of his career. Well, I don't think he gets the most out of his potential. <laughs> oh. I didn't. To my extreme surprise, I didn't say anything. I just kind of, okay. Which I think, in my own perverse way, was a sign of maturity. Because it really would have been easy to lose my mind. <laughs> that there's a man who is one of the better pitchers in the major leagues of baseball this year who throws 83 miles an hour and he's not dead by whiplash. <laughs> That is what getting the most out of your potential looks like. But that wasn't the time or the place in my mind to have that conversation. Because invariably, what's happened over the past 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 years, depending on who you are and, and what your background is, the baseball conversation has changed. We know more things, or we think we know more things, or we have different conversations than we did 20 years ago. The reason I'm sitting here tonight, and I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that the reason you're all sitting here tonight as well, is because you have a passion for baseball. I know that I do. I literally would not be here if I didn't have a passion for baseball. And that passion for baseball between people like you and people like me, it changed the way we talk about the conversation it changed the conversations we had about baseball because for a long time the conversations we were having about baseball weren't good enough. The conversations were, were stodgy and the conversations were full of misinformation and they were full of shit, frankly. People like you and people like me, we wanted better conversations about baseball and we're having them. In a way that I feel like the conversation about the conversations is over. We don't need to sit here and, and berate somebody and, and have ugly conversations and, and, and try to prove how overtly right we are because, again, that conversation is over. And in that, invariably what happens with that conversation is it becomes more about me than it does about baseball. 
if I'm trying to prove something about how right I am or how my knowledge of Jose Bautista's declining isolated power shows that he's not going to deliver value in the last year of his contract or whatever, it's not about Jose Bautista. It's not about having an interesting baseball conversation with anybody. It's about me. It's about me showing off what I think I know, which is almost nothing. So when I, when I had that, that, that conversation with the coach of my kid's team, when he attacked Mark Burley in that way, I didn't, I didn't freak out, which is strange because, again, not because Mark Burley and I are obviously blood relatives, but because, because it didn't matter. That, that, that's not a conversation I'm going to win. And it's not about winning the conversation. It's not a conversation that's going to go anywhere. But the conversation that we have as baseball fans in 2014 and 2015 has gone a very long way. Really what we talk about now and, and, and the way that I like to try to talk about baseball, it's not about numbers. It's not about this guy's got seven wins above replacement, this guy's got five. Again, that almost doesn't matter. I feel like what's changed and what's better and how we're all having more fun and, and having passionate conversations that results in people paying money to sit here and, and, and to talk about it and to listen to other people talk about it, it's, it's that passion that's driven just like a, a renewed interest in baseball. I don't know about, about you guys, but I was, for a while, when I was a teenager, I was, in the, I was in the woods. I was way too cool. I didn't care as much about baseball. I knew I liked Sean Green, and I knew I liked Carlos Delgado, but I wasn't, like, immersed in the day-to-day -day minutia. But the, the change in conversation, it's really pulled me back in. And I think that right now the conversation that we're really having is, is then the key to the conversation is just about talking about production. And framing it in that way. Is this guy a productive player? How does he produce? There's different ways to get there. And so if someone's trying to tell you that this guy's got 10 wins versus someone else has got seven, it doesn't matter. Because you can have that conversation with that person, and you don't have to try to tell him about, his, about the regression that's coming to his home run rate. You know a guy's going to be productive because you know. And you know that a hitter is productive because he, because he draws a walk or he doesn't draw a walk, he put the bat on the ball. There's a thousand different ways to get to the same result. And I think that's the kind of conversation that we're able to have now. It's way more fun. And I mean, the MVP debates and stuff like that, they, they, they've really taken to a place that they're not fun because the guy who's supposed to win doesn't win. No, but because it becomes hectoring and it becomes bullying and it becomes pushy. And that's, we've gone away from improving the conversation. We've gone away from having like productive baseball talks and, and having fun to, well, measuring our various body parts. So that's what I, that day when I'm standing on a dusty ball diamond in, somewhere in Etobicoke, it wasn't about mansplaining anything to anybody. It wasn't about statsplaining anyone to, to anything to anybody who wasn't, especially going to be receptive to that conversation anyway. But I feel like we've come a long way and we're having better conversations. And for that, I feel like we all uh, benefit. And in, it's all out there. There's all interesting things for you to find and to talk about and to read and to share and to discuss about baseball that aren't just reading the back of a baseball card. And I think that we, it's a good thing. Because if it wasn't that way, I would be just like another guy with a beard who was scribbling his nonsense working at a bean factory in Kansas who now works for the Red Sox. So, I don't know. I, it's a brave new world is what I'm trying to say, and I hope that we're able to continue to push it and make it, and more, make it more inclusive and make it more uh, productive and more fun because that's really what it's all about. Baseball's fun, so we should all have fun talking about baseball. Here, here. So that's it. Sorry. I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything. Stoughton, the guy with the beard. Yeah. Okay, but how do, you, how, how do you bridge the gap to those people that you're having the conversation with? Not that I, not that I ever have any, you know, <laughs> interactions like that. I feel like that's... I feel like in my personal life, I've had, like, I tried to talk to my friends about why well, Arkham is stupid, and it was just like banging my head against the wall. It's like, did you have the... And maybe, like you say, you know, it's, a, it's, it's a not a conversation worth having. But 
I, I, I don't know. It's like you have to go through a whole history of how we got to this point in the conversation to even start talking to them about that sort of stuff. And I would like to include those people in our little thing here and, and, and sort of talking about things that are more elevated. It sounds like douchebag, you know, <laughs> I feel like it's about it, it's about talking about things in, in the terms in which each of those numbers is are, are so the context that each of those numbers or each of those talking points, whatever they might be, the way that they're presented on their face. There are stats that are predictive, there are stats that are storytelling stats, and there are stats that are supposed to be looking forward. So again, I feel like the numbers often are troubling. For people and the numbers are counterproductive when again if you strip away the elements like wins above replacement uh, i'm sure most people are at least under uh, familiar with the concept because the concept is rock solid right what does the guy do what position does he play how often does he do it right it doesn't need to be anything more complicated than that there are people who are on the front lines, who are digging into databases and making SQL queries. I'm not them. I'm not a sabermetrician. I'm a baseball fan who gets to write about baseball for my job. I, let them worry about how the sausage is made. The ideas, the ideas that we've kind of come to embrace and that have changed the kind of conversations that we've had, they're rock solid. So, it's not going to happen overnight, but so much progress has been made even in like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, or two years even, that I really think that we just need to keep, we can keep making headway by being understanding and being intelligent without being condescending and shitty, which I cannot pretend that I have not been <laughs> shitty so many times. I'm shitty right now. I'm wasting your time. But that's beside the point. So that's, that's my perception of it, is strip it down to its elements. I, I feel like if you've read or thought or done anything about even advanced stats or the way that people think about baseball, so many people have had, you've had an aha moment. It doesn't matter what it was. If it was a Bill James annual, if it was something that Dave Cameron wrote on fan graphs, if it was something that Stoughton wrote on Drunk Jays fans, Someone, at least at one point, you've had that aha moment where you see something, you're like, yeah, Jesus Christ, why don't they count walks in batting average? They're just as good. Just something as simple as that. So getting, finding that aha moment for your friends, stubborn as they might be, it's out there. We just have to make sure that we're presenting it in a way that is, people are going to want to come to it as opposed to run away from it, like we're beating over the head with it. Good. Here's a struggle I find myself having. Since I had my aha moment and came to find different ways of looking at the game, the way I appreciate certain players has to change. Now, I have a deep lust for Troy Tulowitzki, and now I can justify it through numbers and various other things. But I have a different kind of appreciation for the Dion Navarro, Jumbo Diaz, men of heft in the game. <laughs> who traditionally, maybe not the best, most defendable players. Embracing love of terrible players in the way the dialogue is going has presented a bit of a, I love them because I love them, shut up, leave me alone, reaction. Is there a place for changing, the, for having different streams of dialogue in this, or is it about context for the numbers themselves and saying, look, we can all just guys terrible about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, it depends on the conversation, the context of the conversation, like you said. If you're in a conversation with someone and they're trying to play GM, well, you're not going to be like, well, I love Rocco Baldelli more than I love life because he's amazing, even though he's never, he never plays and he's been retired, or I love Deion Naval because watching him gives me joy. Like, there's, you don't need to rationalize or justify that to anybody. But if someone's going like, well, they should upgrade the catcher position, you'd be like, well, yeah, he's terrible. Come on, he can't hit at all. But for the time being, I love watching him roll around the bases, and I love watching him <laughs> laugh and just be ridiculous. I, again, it, it, it's, it's fun. You, we watch baseball, we talk about baseball, because it's fun. It beats the hell out of work and 
spreadsheets, again, they let the nerds do that. Jesus Christ, like, enjoy the game. So, again, it's the conversation, the context of the conversation is you don't need to justify the fact that you love the 25th man or the goofy, you know, the, the long reliever who, who comes out and has a ridiculous haircut. Like, Jesus, that's awesome. Could the team improve on it? If you want to play GM, sure, yeah, yeah no, he's not helping. These guys are, they're chaff. Like, you can bring another guy in and he'll do it in a second. That doesn't mean it's not fun. Sir? How am I supposed to react tomorrow night when JP against TV gets a better ovation and it's very well suited to take that? I think you are uh, overestimating the kind of reaction that JP against TV is going to get. <laughs> Arden and I were talking about it before. Arden's welling, sportsnet.ca. Sportsnet Magazine, Jesus, come on. He doesn't write on the web. He has a real job. Uh, he was like, he's going to get the shit boot out of him. And I was like, oh, yeah, he totally is. He really is. He's going to get booed. He's going to get booed. And it, it's not as unfortunate as like the re reaction that Vernon Wells got, but people know his name, and they don't love him. What are you going to do? It's, it's unfortunate that JP and CB will get booed. But you make your bed a little bit. You kind of lie in it a little bit after a little while. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I agree with you, uh, but to play devil's advocate a little bit, aren't you maybe worried that what we're doing is forcing maybe a niche perspective on baseball onto the crowd at large and thus kind of raising the barrier for entry to be a baseball fan by forcing people you know, really dividing the world into Joe Morgan versus Fire Joe Morgan, you know? Yeah, that's not unfair to say. But again, that's, that's why I feel like it's not, you don't have to put it in a way that, that does, in fact, raise the barrier for entry. But, like, we were, we were kids when we, you know, fell in love with this game. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, granted, we have, we have had an aha moment. But I didn't have that when I was, you know, when I thought Manny Lee was the greatest player the Jays had ever, you know, mm -hmm. seen, right? And he was objectively a shitty baseball player, but I still fell in love with the game and the sport. And now it's changed. But what we want is to is to make our perspective everybody's perspective. I don't think that's necessarily true. Again. It, if you're having that conversation where someone is saying like Manny Lee is the best shortstop in the national in the American League, you could be like, I don't know that I agree with that. I don't. There are lots of guys who do things better than he does. But again, you, it's, I, I don't necessarily advocate like attacking people with it. Again, with open arms and with hugs and be like, it's okay. You'll learn. You'll learn. But again, it comes back to the context of the conversation. If someone's telling you that that they want to play GM, or they're saying that Jesus. You know, Steve Tolleson should play every day, or the, the flip side of it, you know, like Brett Laurie should be in the minor leagues, or whatever it might be. Again, you, you can kind of come to the, come to the conversation as it, as it presents itself to you, as opposed to walking around. Again, what I'm advocating is, 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 is open mindedness, and just, again, it's fun, and having fun, and having fun conversations in a way that, don't, that aren't exclusionary, but don't, you don't have to sell your soul and be like, yeah, you know, RBIs aren't so bad. But, Again, just kind of framing things in terms of a way that, that is representative of what you know about the game and how you feel about it. Because you had that aha moment, and it's not because you didn't care. And it's not because you're a lizard who just responded to, to this kind of cold uh, uh, statistical approach. It's, it meant something to you. And you realized that, yes, I, 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 I always felt like that guy was really good. And lo and behold, he was. You go back and look at some of the guys who were... Who, who may have been kind of shoved aside back in the day. I, I, the one I always go back to is like Jack Clark's 1987 season. You go back and look at Jack Clark played on the, on the Cardinals who had Vince Coleman and Willie McGee and all these guys, and they just ran and ran and ran, and you look at Jack Clark's numbers, and it, it, it blew my mind. I was like, I had no idea, not only that he was, like just how good he was, but in the way that he was good. And, and his numbers are insane to look at now. But I don't, he probably didn't get his due. So you can have that conversation, be like, you know who was really underrated? Fred McGriff, Carlos Delgado, guys that got overlooked because they didn't hit for a high average or whatever, but without being a dick about it. That's the big thing. Just don't be a dick. I'm still learning. I'm a huge, terrible, terrible person. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm still learning too, but like, it's not just statistics, right? Like, a lot of people back in the day, like Dave Steve, 
because you didn't ever have to guess what he was thinking on the map. You knew it. You could see it on his lips. And he was entertaining, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so is it just that, or you know, is the pitching staff better this year because the honor tomorrow's less of a presentation he hasn't seen it or what? Like, like human beings respond to each other in different ways. Fans respond to players, players respond to other players, and, and maybe there's something about the honor tomorrow that pitching staff really, you know, likes this year that just wasn't there for JP last year. How do you measure that? Measuring that, you can't measure that. But again, that's for me. That's part of the way about advancing the conversation. And you, and if you follow some guys, uh, you know, you see them online, or you see you hear them them talk. Uh, maybe let's charitably say people who are kind of in the trenches of the early days of uh, they had their aha moments. Maybe much earlier than much of, than a lot of us. You see a lot of people who haven't changed their thinking from 2002 or from 2003. It's like the game's different now. Nobody scores. Right? Like you have to be able to adjust and understand and, and be willing to embrace the fact that the game is always going to change and you're always going to learn. So, absolutely. I mean, look at the Red Sox last year, the perfect example. Right? Did they get that much more out of Johnny Gomes because uh, they used him properly or because he made everybody feel good? There's no way to, to discount it. You talk about Deion Navarro, it's like, okay, well, then next year, what, if suddenly the pitching staff is bad and everything else is the same, what's changed? Nothing. Okay, maybe what we thought happened last year didn't quite happen last year. But the big thing for me, again, it, it's coming back to, to the joy. Like, it's fun. It's still fun. You don't need to justify liking a guy. You like a guy. But it, it's when you start telling me, you like, the difference between you like a guy and I think a guy's better, it's like, well, we can talk about that. We can talk about that. And it's just a matter of, like, establishing the ground rules before we do it. Last one, okay, Joanna, last one. Oh, okay, I just want to add, I know I've already talked a lot, and now I'm on your panel. Um, I just want to say, can we, and I'm probably preaching the choir on this one, okay, can we please just accept that it's a game of failure and not scream every single time somebody does something bad or they're over 10 or whatever it is, and scream about it on Twitter and talk about how there are only two games about 500, or whatever it is, season's over when it's May, and just, Relax. Except last year when they were fucked. <laughs> you could try. I. I you, you, you. Be an asshole too. We've tried. I've tried. We've all tried. To tweet the Wilmers and Mary Davis of the world and say, I knew two weeks ago they were gonna suck, and now they're sucking. Like, can we? Can we just? Just everybody stop. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> I. I, I, I I don't think you can discount that the joy factor because when, when when there's the joy, there's the opposite, right? There's the there's the the equal but opposite reaction, which is the apparent agony and praying for death that happens probably 80 or 90 times a year when the Jays lose. Uh, it happens. Uh, that again, that that's that's a battle that 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 might is best fought with the with the ground rules clearly drawn and and making it, you know, approaching it not be like you're a, a lunatic for getting so upset because they lose. You're a bad person who shouldn't watch baseball anymore. It's like, oh, that's really, really not going to work. I really am doubtful of your approach in this respect. They should find new hobbies. New hobbies. Hmm? They should find new hobbies if they can. We should all do more with our time than talk about baseball. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.